what's up everybody, it's CrossCurrent. So today I played a game of Sea of Thieves with my friend Hellcat Science. He is new to YouTube, so please be sure to check him out. Uh, also, we were going through a beginner's guide for Sea of Thieves, but we're doing it really in depth. Please just listen up for him. Let me know what you think. Let him know what you think. And be sure to share it below. Thank you guys. Alright, welcome to Hellcat Science. I am Kron Helder, and today we will be going over Sea of Thieves. Uh, with the April 30th update coming soon around the corner, um, it will be bringing in a lot of new players to the game, and I'm going to create a new pirate here, just to get everyone up to speed on what to do in the beginning. Uh, my friend, longtime friend, CrossCurrent, will be uh, along with me for this journey, if not creating a new pirate he'll at least be there in spirit and then we'll get right on his boat and we'll uh start heading off to do some uh pirating all right so first thing you're gonna want to do if you already have a pirate is you're gonna go into your settings go to your pirate profile delete your pirate now i don't know why you would want to do that if you already had a pirate unless you're me and streaming for or recording for all the new people out there who are going to be joining Sea of Thieves to show them what to do. <clears throat> so first off, you can select anyone from your pirate auto-generated thing right here. And now you will be able to change their hairstyle and color in the game along with their tattoos and beard. The only thing you cannot change is their body type and gender. So if you don't like any of the body types you have, what you're going to want to do is hit page down on the keyboard and that'll generate a whole new list of pirates for you to scroll through. Now, personally, I don't like the uh, average body type pirates because there's so many of those on the oceans today. So what I'm going to go ahead and do <coughs> is I'm going to pick this little little pudgy pirate right here. And he's got a cannonball. Kind of wish he had a beer, but uh, that's just the way the generator made him. See, she's got a beer. But since I'm not a girl, I will uh, play this manly man over here. And then what you want to go ahead and do is right off the bat, you'll before you join any cruise or anything like that, you're going to want to pick a ship. Uh, just pick the sloop for now, because honestly it doesn't matter. This is just so you can get your starting stuff out of the way. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and make it a closed crew, so that my friend uh, CrossCurrent can join me without anybody else mucking that up. And um, we'll go ahead and set sail. And after a short loading screen, that'll put us on the starter island. Now, all those weapons you see in the screen there, on the loading screen, they don't actually do any more damage than the weapons you start out with. They're just cosmetics. So if you see a pirate legend with, like, the best gear, it doesn't mean he does more damage than you. It's just that he looks prettier than you do. Let's start out here, grab our sack of gold and our little teeny tiny knife for our big meaty hands. And of course our banana. That's going to be your main source of healing, at least until the April 30th update, which is coming in a couple of days. So, when the April 30th update comes out, you will have healing through different types of cooked food and all that stuff. But I will go over that later. What we're going to be doing now is doing the uh, tutorial so everyone can get caught up. So, you hold Q to view your equipment, and it wants you to select the banana, so you go up here, and you just select your banana. You can hover over it, and just let go, and that'll select it for you. And then obviously, you click and hold to eat the banana. <clears throat> to switch weapons, you can scroll through your mouse wheel here, or you can hit the number one, two, and... The number one and two buttons to switch between your primary and secondary weapon. Now you can change those at any point during the game. 
but I will go over that in just a second here. So, you hold E to view your quests, and later on you'll have this entire wheel full, so you'll make sure to want to keep track of what you have active. Um, when you want to select a quest, obviously you go and hover over it just like you did the banana, and let go of E, and then you bring it up by holding the click button, so it's showing me a map example, and then to show someone else your map, you right click instead of left click, and see on the bottom here, it says seek a voyage in search of gold to fortunes unknown and stories untold. Psst. Hey, pirates, <clears throat> come over here. And then it says speak to the mysterious stranger at the tavern, because the uh, back of the map told me to, and now the uh, pop-up is telling me to. So this is the mysterious stranger. She's got a uh, little eye patch and uh, hollow dead eyes that kind of glow. Hail, pirate. And she continues talking even though there's no voice dialogue coming out of her mouth, because that's just what dead people do. <sighs> so she says, greeting pirates, I'm told that you're new to Sea of Thieves, allow me to show you the ropes. So. If you just want to, like, hop into the game and skip, like, all of the dialogue, you're just wanna, gonna go ahead and say, I just want to get out to the open seas. And she's like, that's a spirit just like the pirate lord himself. But first, allow me to show you how things are done around here. And she wants you to take a chest and deliver it to the gold hoarders. Um, and she has no need of money because she's dead, obviously. So, she's going to give you a chest, you're going to go turn it in, and you get all the loot go. just for free. Now, a thing to note about this is if you are in a party while you are doing the tutorial quest, when you sell this chest, your party also gets the money. So, the gold hoarders here are in this tent. Uh, <clears throat> he's got a uh, little gold eye there. But to sell it, you just walk up to him and you hit F. The gold hoarders will always be in this tent on the island marked by the key. It doesn't matter what outpost you're at, you can always sell to the gold hoarders. And then <clears throat> it wants you to buy something from the clothing store. So you run up this way. So we walked out of the tavern, just to show you, that's the tavern where we got our first quest. And here's the gold hoarders with the key. And then we walk up this little slope here to the uh, clothing store. They want us to buy something, so we'll go in here real quick. What are you looking at? Mr. Cooper, the, the finest clothier on the island, which isn't hard because he's the only one. Um, as you can see up here, we only have 150 gold and uh, five doubloons. Now, the doubloons are used for other things, but I'm going to purchase myself a nice, fancy beard. Because what kind of pirate are you if you don't have a magnificent beard to match your magnificent boat? Now, if you wanted to change your clothing at any point when you get more, you can either do it here at the clothing shop. So I'm going to put on my, my nice little captain's shirt there. Get some... Nah, we'll, we'll show our belly this time. We'll get some tattoos going. Alright. Um, get us some sandals, pants. Obviously need those. And a nice little belt. And then... To change your hairstyles and your tattoos, you go to your vanity chest, also at the clothing store. And we want beautiful, long, flowing locks of tussled hair. And we're going to make it dark gray. And we're going to put my beard back on because it's amazing. And then to change your tattoos, you can go into uh, the same place where you change your hair. And you can pick any of the tattoo sets that are on there. Now you can buy more tattoos from the clothier, obviously. <clears throat> but um, for right now I think I'm gonna go with there's one with like a giant giant uh, cross pistols and a skull there it is oh where'd it go 
Yeah, this one, I think. Because you can just see that under my coat there. Yeah. Perfect. So, after you buy from the uh, clothier, it wants you to visit any trading company and acquire a voyage. So the trading companies, <clears throat> as of this update, before April 30th, are our gold hoarders, which we already talked to, nice Mr. Henry here, and the uh, Lost Souls people, Order of Souls as it were, Madame Oksana, and another <clears throat> trader all the way at the end of the dock, which is the uh, just the straight up traders. Order of merchants or whatever. Um, and they each give you different quests. She gives you, like, fetch quests for, like, spices and stuff like that. And, like, chickens, livestock. And the gold hoarders will give you treasure maps and uh, riddles to hunt down lost treasure chests. And the Order of Souls here will send you on bounty missions for pirate crews. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to pick up the starter of Let's the pirate crews. Um, we'll go ahead and do the Wailing Hell. Why not? <clears throat> and then we're going to go ahead and I will show you how to get your friends in here so you go to your escape you go to my crew if you started with a closed crew like I did it doesn't matter you can hit the number one button while in your while in your crew page and that'll bring up your Xbox app list and you can see cross current here um, so you just click him and you hit confirm and that'll send him an invite and we'll go ahead and get his voice channel turned on here so we can uh, say hi. Hello, Crosscurrent. Hello. So, as you are well aware, if you were listening to me, we just picked up the uh, bounty for the Hell crew, or whatever it was. <clears throat> yep, the Wailing Hell. And it's a pitiful crew, so it should be pretty easy. Got our pitiful sloop here to go along with that. So, when you start a voyage, you come down to your captain's room or wherever your uh, table is for your voting, which is generally in the captain's quarters, like right next to where the bed would be on any other ship except for the sloop. <laughs> And you stick it on this table here, just got like a bunch of knife marks in it, because, uh, well, obviously you can see when you vote for a uh, quest, you throw down a knife into the table. So, it's got little gold trim around the edges of the mat there, and you just place it down, and then it'll go over to a corner, and since... Crosscurrent has just joined my crew. I have to wait for him to vote on it. He's probably still in a loading screen. No, no. I'm here. <clears throat> okay. Um, but yeah, if you're alone, you'll just slap it on down. I think you still have to vote for it if you're alone. Yeah, you still do. But in either case, you vote for it and you get a pop-up like this. It tells you, a tussle with the pitiful crew of the Wailing Hell. And then, obviously, you go to your maps, or your quests here, by holding down E. And you select one, and it says, The Isle of Last Words. So, we go over to our trusty map here. We're going to want to scroll in till we can see the names of the islands. And it was the Isle of Last Words, right? Isle of Last Words, yes. Alright, so... We see here we got the Isle of Last Words. We can go ahead and click while that's centered on our map, and that will circle it. So that's where we'll be going for the first one. And then if you hit F to get out of your map, you go over here, you select the next one. And last scene on Shiver Retreat, Captain Shelley. So we'll go over here to our map again, find Shiver Retreat. Pretty easy. Starter quest. Didn't expect it to be hard. <clears throat> 
select there. And I believe Cross Current has brought us a random quest, and it says Forgotten Stories in Shipwreck Bay. So we'll find Shipwreck Bay here. Now we'll probably hold off on that because that's over by um, a enemy ship that is on a Marauder's Run. So. If we approach, we'll probably get blasted out of the water in our little sloop. <clears throat> so for right now, we'll probably head to Shiver Retreat first, which on our map here down in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see north, south, east, and west. And those are oriented the correct way on the map, usually. I have heard from Cross Current here that sometimes his face is the opposite direction. <clears throat> so... We will want to go south by southwest. So, our sails are up, but we are about to be in a storm. So what we're going to do is raise our anchor first. <clears throat> and south by southwest. So, we're going to go ahead and point our boat <clears throat> that direction. A little bit of rubbing on the dock never hurt anyone. And then you want to straighten your wheel out. Now this gold... This gold handle, that's the uh, center marker for your wheel. And you can turn it in one complete circle either way. But the reason you know it's center is, I'll try and demonstrate it here, is you'll hear a little clunk when it gets centered. So I will turn it past the uh, mast here and you'll hear it. That sort of clunk every time I pass the center mast, that's how you know it's center. So we'll go ahead and open our sails, which is this guy right here, and start heading off. Now, since we are going to be in a storm, our, our uh, wheel is going to turn by itself, so you really gotta pay attention to that. And the other thing to note in a storm is your compass there. If you're in the center of the storm, or anywhere near the most severe part, it'll spin in random directions. So, before you get in a storm, make sure you're heading the right direction, and make sure to hold on to your wheel. Also, don't forget to use the bucket. And if you have a, another person in your party, uh, they will most likely be on the bottom using the bucket to drain your ship of water. Because the rain will make your ship fill up and you can eventually sink. So if you're solo playing for the first time, just try not to go into storms because that's going to be way too much for you to manage on your own. So... We're going to go ahead and sail through the storm here. Oh, and another thing, since we're in the eye of the storm now, you might see it, you might not, but you can get struck by lightning. It's actually an achievement for that, I think. You can get struck by lightning and die. So, there's that. So when you get close to an island, you can see that uh, it'll pop up with the island name. That's Tri Rock Island over there. And. Ow! Ow! I just got struck by lightning. There you go. As did I. Perfect. As did I. Thank you, Gods of the Sea, for demonstrating what I was just talking about. <laughs> and, uh. So the sloop here. It has the shallowest bottom of the ships, so you won't be rubbing on land too much unless you really try to. Um, now that being said, it is one of the most maneuverable ships, but it is not the fastest of ships. The only way you're going to outrun other ships is if you sail directly into the wind, because you have less mass to drag you down. No. But, a side note is that using a sloop to get rid of uh, skeleton ships and or sea monsters is quicker than using a bigger ship. 
Yes. Now, to stop really fast, like we're coming up on our island here, you just drop anchor. Now, usually, if there wasn't a storm, I would have just raised the sails and stopped that way. So you can raise the sails. Now, one thing to note that will put you ahead of m a lot of players is every time you stop, you want to immediately raise that anchor after you put the sail up all the way. Because if your sail's up all the way, your ship isn't going anywhere. And while you have the anchor raised, that'll just be that much quicker that you can hop on your boat and drop your sail and get out of there. Because if you have your anchor down and a ship rolls up on you, you're just going to try and uh, drop your sail and run away, but you can't go nowhere because you already got your anchor down, and that's precious time lost. So, Speaking of precious time, Hellcat, there's uh, three skeletons on the shore that you can see from here. Yes, uh, that is one of our bounties. So, to change your weapons before we get into fighting skeletons here, you can come down to your armory. It's marked with the crushed uh, blunderbuss and cutlass. And you can go in there. You already have all your weapons unlocked. And they all do the same amount of damage. I have a skin because of the uh, two year or one year anniversary or whatever. Um, so, what I like to have for skeletons is either my pistol or my Eye of Reach. And I'll get into the reason for that later once I can demonstrate it. So, we've got our cutlass and our pistol. And if you ever run out of ammo for your pistol, your ammo is displayed in the bottom right. So, I'll take a shot here. And so... You see I'm missing an ammo ball now, so I can come down here to this ammo chest and refill it, and that's the best way to do that. Now sometimes on islands there will be an ammo chest that you can fill up at, but I wouldn't count on it all the time. So combat wise, if you miss a swing, you have a little bit of a recovery time. but. You can use inanimate objects to speed up that, because that'll count as a hit. And our skeletons also count as hits, obviously, even when they block. And always make sure to reload your weapon before you put it away, unless you're in a PvP. But even during a PvP, if you can swing it, it'd be the best idea. Now, our bounty is that captain right there, Captain Shelly Pressgang. And she has a little bit more health than all the other skeletons, so she'll take a little bit more to kill. And you can see I just missed there and she punished me for it, because I had that recovery time. And as you can see, me and him were both on her for a little bit and it took quite a little bit more to kill her than the other skeletons. And when you complete a bounty, the captain will drop a skull like this, and you can go ahead and pick that up. And we're lucky enough to get a rowboat on our first island. So you can throw it down on the rowboat. To use the oars, it's going to be your directional pads A and D. A will control your left oar, and D will control your right oar. Uh, no matter which way you're facing, honestly. So, to go forward, you hit both of them at the same time. And to turn, you hit one of them. Now, if you want to turn faster, you can hit Q to drop an E-brake on one of the oars. Or E to drop the E-brake on the other oar. That'll allow you to make tighter turns, so I can turn around and face my ship again. And then just go straight for it. And once you get close enough to your ship, it'll give you the option here to dock. And you just hold down R to dock your rowboat. So you can take your rowboat with you anywhere you go. And the skulls, you can just throw them there. Throw them anywhere, honestly, but... Oh, what are we doing now? There's another one listed at this exact place. No, 
Wait, what? Yeah, there are two quests listed for Isle of Last Words. No, this is Shiver Retreat. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so yeah, the whatever. Isle of Last Words is actually a little bit uh, north by northwest. So we'll go ahead and head there now. And since we have our anchor up, all we really have to do is drop our sail. And we're on our way. And then we'll go ahead and crank the ship and start going north by northwest. And I'm about to have a drunk crewmate. <laughs> now, a thing to note about being drunk is if you get drunk enough, eventually you will throw up. And when you do, uh, you can pull out your bucket and catch that throw up. So, this is your bucket here on your Q wheel. And if you catch your throw up, you will have a bucket of throw up, which you can then throw on other players to obscure their screen and make them sick. Aaron, do you mind uh, throwing a bucket of sick on me when you get the chance? Okay, yeah. So well, we're we're collecting water from the rain, so I might want to wait until afterwards. Oh, uh, we it's not gonna be that bad. Yeah, all right. The I island. Thyself. The island should be just right here anyway. I think. No, that's Skull Keep. We gotta go past it. So, once my uh, cross current here gets drunk, he will uh, throw a bucket of sick on me. So I can show you how much it can obscure the screen and mess up a player in a PvP. So if you know you're going to get into a PvP, get drunk well beforehand and fill up that bucket. Because it can just be another tool in your arsenal. Even if you don't use it, just go ahead and fill it up because you might need to use it at some point. Takes about six to eight tankards of um, alcohol, booze, whatever you call it, to get to where you can throw up. Alright, we're pirates. It's Grog. And you hear him throw up in the background. <laughs> so, at least wait till we're uh, stopped before you throw the sick on me. Yeah, also, you'll have to use the bucket since now we have a bucket of sick. Okay, uh... And I cannot steer because I'm also... Well, yeah. I think we'll be alright for a little bit. I'll make a hole in the ship to let out the water. Yeah. It's a great <laughs> idea. out of this storm. The island we need is pretty much directly ahead of us, I think. It's hard to see with these tall waves. And we just got hit by lightning again. And it made a hole in the bottom. Oh. Good. You can at Did least I just... you can at least repair the hole. Yeah. Wait, how do we wind up at Sunken Grove? Oh yeah, we gotta turn all the way around. Yep, I just I just went past it, didn't I? It's over there. Goodbye, Sunken Grove. I'm sure I'll be back to you later. Yeah, one of the random quests I picked up was uh it was one of those uh, special quests to get a lot of loot that you normally had to pay doubloons for. Oh, yeah? You can tell that because looking at this map, it's got the red on the outside, the red outline. 
Well, that's because also it's a volcano. There's a volcano because the islands will disappear if it's a super well looted island. Well, the the reason it has the red markers around it uh, to clear up any misinformation is actually because it is a volcanic island. Yeah. Not because it's a depleted place. Yeah, well, that's the thing. The volcanic islands have consistently more loot than the other islands. Yeah. Well. That and they have a chance of spawning ash in chests, which are worth double the value of their regular counterparts. Ow! Stop hitting my boat, Thor! Jeez. I know I'm not a Viking anymore, but you can't be that mad about it. We're just, we're just pirates. We're like Vikings without morals. So, if I'm any sort of correct, which I am not, it appears. Okay, getting the stage where I'm probably going to have to dump out the sick, unless... I'm coming down. It's only like one or two buckets worth. I need to go this way, right? Uh, we are turning correctly, yes. And it'll be on the left side. It'll be on the left side, the wrong way. You're turning the wrong way. I, I got it. Okay. So, as you can see, you can check the map from up here. The Isle of Last Words is directly off to our left. And thank you, Storm, for helping me steer. <laughs> so this should be that island. This big old rock structure right here. Or at least it should be somewhere near it. We heading towards it? There it is. See that little island right in the middle there? That's where we need to be. I'd like to describe the barrels are floating in the water. Ah, yes. So, these barrels here, if you're ever low on supplies in the middle of the ocean, drop anchor and grab those. They're full of cannonballs, planks, and other goodies that can help you survive in the open seas. So there gonna, are typically a lot more than normal in them, too. Like, about 30 cannonballs per barrel, typically. And we're gonna run aground because I dropped anchor too late. Ah. So, if you do run aground, you'll get a nice little hole in your ship, which CrossCurrent just got done patching. That'll eventually fill with water. Um, so now that we're on the island, like, literally on the island... Um, we can go ahead and hop off and do our other quest here. So, our quest should be to, uh, kill Captain Deadly Daily. So, and his crew. So, first we gotta finish off his crew. Ow. So, I just got hit by poison. Uh, from this snake here. Now the snakes will spit poison at you, and it does drain your health, as you can see I'm in the red, and it obscures your vision. So, if you see any snakes on a small island like this where you're going to be doing battle, just go ahead and kill them, because it's not worth the trouble. So what would you use to heal, uh, Hellcat? Uh, well, you would use banana, and if I was a smart pirate, I would have a banana on me, but I'm not. So, if you need bananas, you go down here to the bottom of your boat, get your banana crate, and then just eat a tasty banana that'll restore your health there on the bottom left corner. And then you can go ahead and hop off your boat and continue doing battle with the Captain Deadly Daily.
Oh, sweet! Villainous Ooh. Bounty Skull. Alright, so of the Bounty Skulls, the Villainous one is the best one you can get. It is worth the most money currently. So, our Villainous Skull, we're gonna go ahead and stick right next to our other skull. And, as you can see, we've completed a voyage. So, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, take our boat here. We could go to Shipwreck Bay. We do have a quest that goes there for treasure. How close is Okay. Yeah, we'll go ahead and go to Shipwreck Bay since it's pretty close and probably out of the storm. Hopefully. Uh, do you want a bucket real quick, or do you want me to try the bucket of sick thing once we're out of the storm? Oh, actually, since we're anchored and safe right now, go ahead and do the bucket of sick so I can show them. So okay, if, you, sick. if you do have a vomit bucket, like he does here, you can throw it on another player, and it will obscure their screen, so in a PvP, they can't really fight, and it will also make them throw up. So, if they do throw up on another enemy, it will also obscure that enemy's screen and make them sick. So, Not as bad as getting hit by the bucket, though. Yeah. They can't obscure your screen back if they vomit on you, but that's not advised because they're probably running away. So we're going to go ahead and raise anchor and head off to Shipwreck Bay, which should be directly east, more or less. Southeast. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. What just happened? Flying boat. Oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's an achievement. Alrighty. So, as you can see, sometimes, if you're lucky, or unlucky, <laughs> depending on the situation, if you're stuck between a bunch of rocks, um, the game will try and put you back in the water. And it'll do that by making your boat the Flying Dutchman. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, that's a new one. Now, I've never had it happen to me personally, except for just then, but I have known about it before, so... <laughs> Now, I'm not sure which direction is east from here, so I'm just going to take a guess. I think it's this way. A slight left, and then we'll be heading there. Okay. Oh, Shipwreck Bay. Duh. I know which island that is, just from the outline. I'm assuming you showed them the best way to look over a sloop and see the map? Yeah. So, okay, cool. they've seen me doing it, I just haven't explained it yet. Because storm. <laughs> yeah. So if you do need to look at your map while soloing, just take a quick gander. You don't have to go all the way down to the bottom. As you've seen me doing before, you can just take a gander over the top here by your anchor, and you'll be looking straight at your map. Make sure, though, if you're going to be looking at your map like that, they zoom in enough so then you can read what the words say. If it's zoomed out too much, you can't. it won't show any words. It'll just show island. Right. So we're on our way to Shipwreck Bay, in the middle of a storm. It's probably how all the ships got wrecked here. You want to raise sail for me? Half way? Yeah, just do it all way. And I'll turn our proverbial boat. Alright. So, as you can see, if you raise the sail all the way, you can uh, stop your ship from running into the island as well. The same as the anchor. However, you will still keep maintain your speed for a little while. More of coast, as it were. And just because we're in a storm, I'm going to drop the anchor. So we don't go anywhere, because the storm will blow your ship around in any way that it can figure out how to. So, it's looking like... How fast are we filling up? Just kind of a drizzle? Um, more than normal. Looks like the storm will probably hit us soon, though. Yeah, it's moving out of the way, so... 
Honestly, if you want to go do the quest since you're doing the uh, tutorial, I'll just kind of stay and hang out. All right, so is this Shipwreck Bay? All right, so here we have a riddle. And we got this riddle from a bottle. But since it's a riddle, you can be almost 100% sure that it's going to be going to the treasure hunters or the gold hoarders, the tent with the key, the small tent. So the riddle says Shipwreck Bay has riches from forgotten stories in the past. So as soon as we land on the island here, the quest will start to update. As you can see, it unblurs the words. So our new riddle is, at beneath the caged remains of the mutinous pirate to the west, e reward is almost found seven paces east by southeast and break the ground. So we have to go west to find a pirate that was caged up and to do that, you go to you hold down Q, open up your compass here, and we'll go west. Go west to the island proper, that is. Caged remains. Well, that's not in a cage, so we can safely say that that's not the guy we're looking for. Oh, hey, uh, found a captain's chest. Oof. Uh, I will put it on the island proper on the uh, beach, and I'll come back for it. Alright. So, like I was saying, sometimes there will be ammo crates on the island where you can fill up your pistol and whatnot. Now, the hard part for some of these riddles is it doesn't tell you exactly where your origin point should be. Now, I assumed it was on the island proper, and I was right, because there's the caged remains of the mutinous guy. So we'll stand directly under him, here, and we'll check our quest again. And it says, go seven paces east by southeast, and break the ground. So, I know some people who can properly count how many paces seven paces is, but I can't. So, east by southeast. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if I'm correct, the treasure chest should be right here. Hey, I was right this time. <laughs> and obviously it's just a little uh, castaways chest probably. Not worth too much, but hey, we're just starting out, so you take anything you can get at this point. You see the captain's chest I dropped over there, Aaron? Across. What? You see the captain's chest? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah I got it. Rain stopped, finally. All right, so. I was just checking to make sure this guy right here was an AI instead of a regular player. Yeah. So that's how you do a, uh, a riddle. You just follow the instructions and, uh, Get a free chest. So we've gone through Riddle and Bounty. I'll be making a video on the merchant because that's more my style. Uh, we got time for a merchant. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, show them how to cash in all this stuff and grab a merchant quest. Now. Some people like to hide their chests, but I figure if someone really wants our chests, they're going to find it no matter what. Because there's not many hiding places on the sloop. Now, of course, if I wanted to be a smart person, I could just stick it up in the ceiling. But even then, you just got a blocky ceiling now, so they know that there's a chest there. Now, one good hiding place on the sloop, if you don't want to be so obvious is when you come down the steps here you stick it right behind these barrels right up against the wall as best you can actually hold up hellcat see if you can stick it underneath the stairs right here on these barrels 
That might actually be a new really good hiding spot. No. Ah, uh, dang it. Okay. But you That's... can stick it behind these barrels here. Just make sure it's hidden like that. So, if someone were to come down here and look at your cargo hold, if they were to just take a quick gander, they can't see the chest because it's behind the barrel. So Also, it looks similar to the clothing, equipment, and vanity chests. Yeah, well, as long as you don't have a captain's chest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because um, the captain's chest is very gilded and obvious. <laughs> so, yeah. we're going to go ahead and raise our anchor. Our sail should be all the way up. So we won't go anywhere while I figure out where the outpost is. So, when you come down here to your map, obviously un unmark everything you've already been to. So we can see that Daggertooth Outpost is directly north of us. So when you want to sell stuff, you always go to an outpost. Doesn't matter what outpost, you could go to... Let's see, let's find another outpost. Cool. Unless it's a merchant quest that says to go somewhere else. That's right. the only time. So you can go to Golden Sands Outpost and sell it if you wanted to, but since we're closest to Daggertooth, we'll go ahead and go to Daggertooth to sell our stuff, which is going to be directly north of us. So I'll go ahead and exit our map here. Get our butts turned around since we're facing south. And now if you hear that odd whispering, that will be our uh, skeleton heads that we got from the captains. We got a skeleton ship coming towards us. Well, from right, uh, right from behind. Good thing we're going north then. Oh, it's a skeleton sloop. That's kind of cute. Ooh. I almost want to fight it. All right. <laughs> Screw it. Let's fight it. Yeah. Let's show people what's going on with this game, combat-wise. Where's it at? It's straight behind us. Oh wow, it's right there, isn't it? Yeah, it's coming straight towards us. So if we just turn around another... Oh, well, there's people on the island that found us. Is there? Yeah, some... No, I mean, not people. Like, uh, sorry. Skeletons with cannons. Oh. I'm assuming skeletons. If it's people, it's kind of funny that they think they could hit us. Alright, so... We're about to do battle with a skeleton crew here. They've got the same sort of ship we do. So it should be a fairly even match. Now, because it's the skeleton crew, I don't actually have to pay too much attention to sailing. So I'm going to raise the sail all the way and not drop anchor. That way I can just constantly point. That's a player, Aaron. That is not a skeleton. That's not? Correct. It has a skeleton mast. Sorry, I really thought that was a skeleton. They're gonna jump on us. So, we're doing ship to ship combat now, which is never exactly fun. Aaron, you mind grabbing the steering wheel? One sec. Yes, please. I'm gonna bucket. Oh, we almost sank. First time I've ever seen a player with a skull mast. Uh, no, that was the, uh, Marauder's flag. Hmm. Well, they probably would have caught us up to us when we would have hit the, uh, 
When we hit the apples, it probably caught up anyways, so. Did we sink them or did they run? No, they're behind us still. Oh. Lovely. Uh. <sighs> pretty sure they almost sank, though. Yeah, I did put, like, I think four cans into them. And however much we ran into them. That too. Um, they're turning towards us. So we're going to go ahead and pick a different outpost to go to. See how long they chase us. We're going to sail directly into the wind. With They're our... turning away from us now. They're going towards Shipwreck Bay. Okay. Um, go ahead and mark Golden Sands for us. It's off to the west. So, unfortunately, there was another player with the Marauders flag up, so they're on, like, a high-risk PvP Wait, mission. Wait, Golden Sands? There's no Golden Sands to the west. Yeah. It's right there. Nope. You passed it. Hit. Over. 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 It's right there. Golden Sands Outpost. Oh, Golden Sands Outpost. I think it meant... I was looking for Golden Sands in particular. All right, that was fun. So, as you can see, like, some players in this game, they'll just try to stink, sink you and steal your treasure. He tried to board us, but luckily I was on top of it and knocked him off the ship. So, they'll drop your anchor, too, to keep you in one spot so they can just pelt you with cannons. But since me and Cross have played together a lot, we're an experienced crew, got that anchor raised as soon as we could, and got out of there. Now well, There's a skeleton crew. You can tell by the glowing lights on the uh, ship itself. That's the best way to tell. Yeah, exactly. Being a blue and, and green, typically. You can change your own colors, though, so... Still, typically that's a good way to tell. The best Most people don't try to look like skeleton ships. <laughs> the, the best way to tell, actually, is if they have that sniper tower on the front out of uh, wooden planks. Because mm. you can't edit your ship, but skeleton ships have a sniper tower up front. Interesting. And if it's a skeleton fleet, it'll have a glowing cloud of... that shows a ship. Right. But not always. Now we should be on our way to Golden Sands Outpost here. Well, I need to go a little more north, apparently. So we're going to go... Where? Those people are still at Shipwreck Bay, so... Well, luckily they didn't decide to give chase, so... We'll have pretty easy sailing to sell all this loot at Golden Sands. Go northwest, because uh, we're a little... So I've never seen another ship pop up on the map before like that. Yeah, uh, that's the Marauders uh, quest flag. So I'll show you. I'll, I'll show everyone actually. So come on up to the mast here, since we're just sailing on our merry way. No storms or anything. Pretty easy. So if you want to change your flag, like we have no flag up, you can go to your ship flag box. Now, the flag of the Reaper's Mark, that puts you on the map for every other player to see. That's the last one with the skull on it. The red one. Now, any other flag is just aesthetics, really. But if you want to form an alliance with other pirates, you go over here to this Alliance tab, and you click Offer Alliance. And if I pop out of there, you can see we got a little heart flag offering an alliance. And any pirates who get close to us will see that we want an alliance. And they can either accept it or try and fight us. But we'll go ahead and put our rainbow flag up because we're fabulous pirates. And um, still need to be going northwest, I think, right? We need to turn a little bit to the right, but we do have that... Uh that right there, so try not to go into it. I think I can sail through it. Eh. 
with how many planes we just used in the fight, it wouldn't be ideal. We do have less than 10 planes now. Like, I have five in my inventory, and there's one down here. It wouldn't be the smartest idea. Well, I think Golden Sands is... Where are we? Eh, we'll be fine. Okay. Uh, give me half sail. So I can get more maneuverability. So if you're under, ever in a position where you need more maneuverability and less speed, you'll want to raise your sail a little bit. Now, usually I don't, but for a case like this where we're running low on planks and we don't want to miss anything and I just want to go through this arch, you can go to half sail and uh, just make your steering super tight and easy to do. And once you're all lined up and you're sure you're going to go through there without a hitch, you straighten it out and you can go ahead and tell your crewmate to put you to full sail or you can do it yourself and go through there super easy. And that's why you, that's why the sloop is one of the most maneuverable ships because if you had a bigger ship this would be a lot harder to do. You get a tighter turning radius on this. So, now we're just uh, on our way to uh, Golden Sands Outpost. Now, if you want extra speed, always make sure your sail is in the wind. So, as you can see right now, our sail is not inflated. We're going a little slow, but if I were to turn it into the wind the way the flag is blowing up there, you can see our sail inflates, and you can hear it, you'll get a little sound. And that'll give you all the extra speed you want. Go down here and check the map. Now I just basically need to be heading directly west, so I'm going to correct course here. For those who have never been in combat in this game before, one of the most consistent weapons to use in PvP is the blunderbuss. Yeah, now, it, personally, I don't like the gun, but in close range, it is far superior against people. It will uh, one-shot them if you are close enough. Now, personally, I don't like using the blunderbuss all too often because it does have that range sacrifice. Um, I, I usually just stick with the pistol. Although, if I am going player hunting, and I know I just want to be battling players all day, I will switch to the blunderbuss, because it has knockback, too. So even if you don't kill them, you have the chance of knocking them off their own ship. Now, when it comes to weapons for fishing, such as megalodons or krakens, You'll I would personally suggest sniper, uh, the eye of reach, and the pistol, because you don't want to be slicing a fish. Even if the kraken... Uh, comes onto your boat and tries to submerge you. If you slice it, it'll poison you and it'll blind you. Yeah. If you use your sword, so. so more consistent using a sniper or a pistol. These waves are making us head southwest. So. The wave direction, it will push your boat off course if you are not counter steering. So, turn because, to the right a bit, we're about to hit twin groves. Yeah. Um, so, you'll want to counter steer, steer in the direction of the waves if you're going to leave your wheel for a little while. So, the waves are coming uh, towards us and off to the left, so I'm going to leave my steering wheel a little off to the right. That way it'll keep us on a straight course for a little bit longer. And we'll go around Twin Groves here and we'll I'll adjust us so we're heading directly west. And then once we're heading directly west, I will adjust the counter steer for the waves again so I don't have to be on the wheel the whole time. 
So since the whale waves are coming at us a little more, um, I can just counter steer about here. <coughs> and that'll keep us going in a straight line. So I don't have to uh, keep coming back up here to check. As you can see, we're still heading west. Compass isn't moving. Counter steered properly. And Golden Sand should be right up ahead. So if I go, well, you're supposed to go up to your crow's nest, but in the April 30th update, that won't be a smart idea. Um, but you can use your little spyglass in your inventory and see Golden Sands right up there, past the waves. Now, the reason that won't be a smart idea in the April 30th update is because if, you're, if your mast here takes enough damage, it will fall over. Oh, nice. And the only way to fix that is going to be to man the ropes here to straighten the mast and then go get planks and repair the mast from the bottom with planks. That's a good update. That's a really good update. And the other thing that will happen, when you put gunpowder barrels on top of your mast, um, it, it will damage the mast, so... If your gunpowder barrels get shot up there, then you don't have a mast anymore. <laughs> so, people are going to have to figure out a different place to put their gunpowder barrels. Well, unfortunately, that's still probably one of the best options, because you don't want to be right next to you where you're steering or you're dead. You don't want to do it underneath, because then you have holes underneath sinking your ship. So, I guess maybe the front of the ship? In all yeah. honesty? So then, well, like, you'll... Well, like probably okay. Sorry. It'll it'll probably still the best place is like right around this area, because then it won't be super visible, but it won't completely screw you over. Yes, it will. Um, if your if your gunpowder barrels are anywhere on your deck or even on the very tip of your ship up here, oh shit, I fell off. No. Anyway, point being, if they're anywhere on your ship that is not your mast, uh, if they blow up, you will get four holes in the bottom of your ship, no matter what. Oh, well, there you go. Um, so, if you do fall off your ship, like I just did, like a dummy, um, you can just wait for your ship to get far enough away, or you can swim in the opposite direction, and then you'll hear a sound like that. And you'll want to look for a smoke signal. That smoke signal is a mermaid. Well, almost a mermaid. It's a mermaid that hasn't completed its transformation yet. Um, so, apparently, according to the lore of the game, these mermaids are pirates who drowned at sea and are transforming into mermaids, and apparently the process is painful. So, these pirates are very nice and use their magic to uh, teleport you back to your ship, because they don't want you to go through the same process that they did. So you go up to your mermaid with your smoke signal, and go ahead and... Uh, teleport back to your ship and as you can see we're at Golden Sands Outpost and I didn't even have to do anything so once again if you do drop anchor so you don't run into the island you immediately want to raise that with the sails all the way up so you can get away faster in case of players so we'll go ahead and load everything onto our rowboat here Now, Just press X to drop it. Yeah. You you can press X to drop loot, which I guess I should have said it before. But the fastest way to transport loot, if you have a lot of it, which we don't, is a rowboat. So you'll go ahead and detach your rowboat, use the oars, and then just go on your merry way here. Now, a special hint with rowboats. Special tip. When you're using it, for the moment at least, uh, animals like uh, Megalodons and Krakens will not attack you, and I believe skeleton ships don't attack you either. That is correct. 
However, players will attack you. If they're smart. <laughs> so, you sell your most important loot first, so you get your captain's chest and your villainous bounty skulls off the boat first. That way, if you get rolled up on play by players, you'll always have all your good loot sold. That way, they don't get as much if they grief you. Here, you can put this one up to show them. So, as you can see, the skulls I just sold to the Order of Souls, which is the eye tent here. Looks kind of like the eye of Ra, almost. Um, but, and then our captain's chest goes to the Gold Hoarders, which is the small tent with the key again. Now, I dropped it instead of selling it to him because I'm a dummy, but you hit F to sell, not X. And I did the same thing with the Villainous Bounty Skull. Hit F to sell, boys, not X. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the merchant quest we'll be picking up is from uh, Senior Trader Mavis here. So I'm going to go ahead and talk yeah, to her. And browse Merchant Alliance offers. And we can do... We'll do a forceful request from the pitiful Mr. Ang. I have a better quest if you'd rather. More renowned. Um, if you prefer. Well, but I mean, this will probably be a simpler quest. Yeah, I don't have that much time, so we're just going to do a, a small one. Alright. So, all right. Be quick, time's precious. So as you sell stuff, your ranking in each of the uh, pirate orders will go up. And as they go up, you can get better quests from them and stuff like that as long as you increase your rank. Now, see, I'm ranked 5 with Order of Souls now. So I can go ahead and pick up the Order, welcomes you. Order of Souls here, and I can get Mystic Follower. Spend 100 gold for that, that's a new <coughs> rank. Now with the new rank, my quests start to cost gold, because they have more rewards associated with them. And you can get special unlocks like the Souls Tankard and Lantern. And gather and the same thing with the uh, gold hoarders here. I can rank them up and get better quests. And a new shovel. Remember, I'm watching. And to get Pirate Legend, to get access to the Pirate Legend vault in the bottom of the tavern, you will need to have rank uh, 50, 50. Rank 50 in three orders. Now, as of April 30th, they will be adding two orders, and you will still only need three orders to get rank 50 and Pirate Legend. So, if you don't like a particular order, just go check out the other ones. Um, the new ones will be the uh, Hunter guys, which are basically animal fetch quests and cooking and stuff like that. And fishing, which will be added as of April 30th. Um, and then the next order that is added as well is wait. the okay. Wait one sec. PVP. Uh, don't you want to get? Don't you want to get the uh, the stuff we're loading for the merchant quest? Oh wait, we gotta go to boat foot first. Don't take the robo, please. We're probably not to use it. Okay, but yeah, um, the next. The next order that will be added is the PvP order, which will be, um, I forget what they're called. Hunter's Call? Or is that the no, uh, fishing one? that's the fishing one. That's the Hunter's Call. Um, I forgot. Anyway, there will be five orders in total, and you will only need three of them to be rank 50 to get Pirate Legend. Now, as he was saying over there... The cloud with the ship and cannons on it, that is a skeleton fleet. Now, if you're solo, you'll probably want to avoid those because that'll just be a hard fought battle for you. But if you I... have if you have a friend in a sloop, you can go ahead and engage. 
It'll be annoying. You just got to make sure you have enough supplies. If you would like to see a video on how to on what happens when you face a skeleton fleet alone, I've got that. <laughs> Still don't suggest it. Doesn't turn out well for me. Definitely uh, interesting though. Cross. <laughs> I'm going to need you over here to vote for this. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot it's democracy here. You pirate democracy. So we're going to go ahead and turn our ship so I can get back to the island faster. Now, another tip. Not really necessary for here. But, if you ever want to get somewhere super fast, you can just go ahead, load yourself into your ship cannon, and fire yourself out of the ship. Now, obviously I hit a rock there, but you can generally fire yourself all the way across islands if you fire yourself out of a cannon. Uh, bye, Aaron. <laughs> so. Oh, we have this kind of quest? You want to cancel and get one that's actually not obnoxious? Um, sure. Was this one that showed like a chicken on the picture? Yeah. If it doesn't show a chicken, I never actually have them give me the chicken quest. It probably did, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Alright. I'm, I'm just gonna select a different quest from her. Yeah, it should show, I believe, for you it should show at most a uh, clothing box and a uh, bottle want? box. I can get, we can do a cargo run, that'll be better. Yeah, if it doesn't say a specific name, it should just be like clothes, bottles, maybe plants. Otherwise... You have the rare opportunity. Alright, so I gotta go back to my boat again. Probably just cut this part out. <laughs> I did steal the chicken coops anyway, though, in case we run into chickens. Good. Alright, get back to the boat and vote again, I guess. Crates and that what? Okay. Hereby requested collect three crates in the name of Senior Trader Mavis. From, Mavis from Gold Sam's Outpost, which is I'm assuming where we're at. Yep, that's always good. Always good. So, so we're gonna go going. over back to our merchant lady once we uh, accept the quest on our boat, and we have to collect three crates from her. And to do that, we just go up to her. No, no, you need to find Mavis. Oh, in right. Particular. Yeah, that's a thing. It's You're not going to get the crates typically from the person you get the quest from in this. You're well, going to have to look for a specific person on the name. So, in, Senior Trader Mavis is... In this case, oh. it's the same person we got the quest from. Oh, really? That's lucky. I guess that's because it has a higher rank. So, we've got three crates of rum here. One has to be delivered to Mermaid's Hideaway. Mermaid's Hideaway and Mermaid's Hideaway. So we're gonna go ahead and load these all into our boat. Now, a thing about the crates of rum, they can get damaged. So they will get cracked. 
basically what you don't want to happen is you don't ever want to have your crates of rum broken. Never jump. And if you're jumping it into water, they don't complain at all about it getting wet, but if you jump or you drop onto the ground, it'll break a bottle. Yeah, well, I didn't break any bottles that time, but <laughs> they just saw an example of that when uh, I jumped over a rock. The bottles kind of chipped. It might just be harder once you rank up, but either way, it's just never a good habit. Because later on, when you level up, you'll have five crates, six crates, or seven, depending upon the quest. So I'll go ahead and pull my e-brake here so I can make a tighter turn. Now, robos are interesting, to say the least. Some people find them annoying. But I yep. just. I am more or less under the impression that. Uh, they're useful, but a, uh, a little difficult to drive. And that happens. So oh, dang it. They're not broke. <laughs> I will say, though, on a side note, if you ever do get the crates of um, delicate clothing, do not go in the water. Try to keep them as dry as possible, so, like, put them on the bottom of the ship, but on top of a barrel or something. Because when they get wet, they will sell for a lot less. Yes. So, Mermaid's Hideaway. It is to the southwest. So we'll go ahead and turn our happy little boat. Kind of like our happy little trees. And Did, uh, you, did you tell them how to equip stuff like uh, the compass and all that, like by pressing Q? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Uh, went over that in the tutorial. Good. Good. Well, it's technically still a tutorial. <laughs> yeah, well, the the proper tutorial, <laughs> the one that the game yeah. provides. You're so, doing the, so you're doing the full broad spectrum, and I'll be doing little specifics, probably. So Sorry. if you're sailing directly into the wind, funny thing, you want to have your sail actually facing the wind. For some reason, the game considers it faster than having your sail at an angle. I don't know why, that's just how it is. Um, so we're going to be heading southwest directly to uh, Mermaid's Hideaway here. Now, a thing to note for combat. Your sword has a short charge-up lunge. And it doesn't take you very far. And if you miss, you're out of breath and can't really move fast for a while. However, if you right-click to block first and then charge up your lunge, you can move at normal speed... And if you jump while you're lunging, you can get extra distance out of it. Like that. See how I got all the way to the back of the ship now? So, in PvP, that's really useful. You can also use it to get from your boat to an island faster, which I will show you when we get to Mermaid's Hideaway. Now, oh, text... Technically, we could use those supplies, but since we're doing a quick cargo run and then probably calling it the end of the tutorial, we'll, uh, we'll skip it for now. But if you're low on supplies like we are because we just got in that big fight with the other players, we, can, we could have used those supplies. But Mermaid's Hideaway should be that island directly south of us, basically. Right there. Is there a beacon lit there? Yeah. Hopefully there's not any cannons. Skeleton fleet nearby. The fortunate part about doing these quests is 
if you quickly just get rid of the merchant trade, the quest's over. You don't have to go back to the merchant to get your reward. You just take the next destination done. So if you're trying to get quick money in the game, the merchant offers are probably the best way to go. Yeah, and because you, you can also just keep grabbing and abandoning quests if you want to get, like, a bunch of quests with, like, chickens from the merchant. Just keep grabbing every quest that's there and abandon them until you fill up your quest log with chickens. Yeah. Also, chickens do not need to be fed. That is a strange thing in the game. If you have a pig, it needs to be fed. Snakes and chickens? No. Yeah. Well, Just, uh, I tr maybe, careful with fish. Maybe in this update, since they're out fishing... I'm not sure. I actually haven't heard anything about that. That'll so, probably be a minor update that they put in. So if but, you want to uh, go ahead and load everything into the uh, rowboat there, I'm going to uh, show them how much of a difference a sword dash makes to get to an island. So I'm going to do the lunging sword dash I showed you guys earlier to get to this island here. So I'm going to block, and I'm going to hold down the attack button, and when I dash, I'm going to jump. And then it... It carries my momentum into the water with me, so when I come up, I'm basically at the island already. And now, if I wanted to get back to the ship, same thing. I just hold down block, charge up my attack, and when I Do dash, I jump. And then it carries my momentum into the water, and I'm basically at the ship. Okay. Yeah, we well, you use the rowboat since you're quicker and better at that, and I hate it. <laughs> so, everything's loaded into the rowboat, thanks to cross current. We'll go ahead and detach, hop in. Since I'm pretty much facing the island, I'm not even going to worry about the e-brakes. We're just going to turn ourselves super slowly over that way. Oh, we should have loaded the uh, chicken baskets on there, too. Yeah, I forgot about it. Yeah, whatever. I got a snake basket and a gunpowder keg, which you can show them what exactly you expect with that if you like. Yeah, okay. That'd be amazing if you found a mermaid. Wink, wink. Nope, game's not doing that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the game disagrees. <laughs> Yeah, give me, give me my crates of rum. So I believe with the snake and the snake basket, you can play music to it and it'll allow it to go down so it won't attack you if you yes. run by it. If you want to uh, grab a snake or just don't want to deal with snakes, you can play music and it'll pacify them, kind of like a snake charmer. So now that we got our rum bottles on the island here, we have to find the person to sell them to. Now, since it's not an outpost, it'll just be a random AI. Yes. Typically near some sort of lighting or barricaded area, oh, such as here's this. this person. All right. So five paces, Frank. That's who we need to sell it to. So we're gonna go back, grab our stuff, and bring it over to him. Also, if you're interested in some sort of lore, every one of those AIs will have a journal. Now, typically, it's not a lot of lore, but it's you know, it's something if you're interested. And as of the April 30th update, they will be adding some sort of story mode. So, if I talk to Five Paces Frank here... Um, he says, I have a great system for burying my treasure. I put my back to a tree, then walk five paces. That way I know where I left it. Yet my treasure always seems to be discovered. Okay. Oh, skeletons. Oh my god, they have a they have a gunpowder barrel. Run. Oh, yeah, this is what I was talking about. This is why I like to carry a pistol instead of a shotgun. Because of gunpowder skeletons like that guy there. So I can shoot him so he drops his gunpowder barrel. That way I can take it and put it on my ship. Ow. He shot me. Now, a thing about gunpowder barrels is that if you shoot them, 
They explode. Come on! <laughs> Why? <laughs> and <laughs> there was another one on the beach. <laughs> but that was your. <laughs> so if you shoot them, they explode and deal massive damage to anything in the radius. And um, typically, it will kill anyone holding it or anyone close enough to it, like it did me and my buddy Crosscurrent here. So that's the reason why you don't want to have it below your ship, because it will automatically put four holes into your hull. And you will sink very fast. But they're also a good thing to have somewhere on your ship, at least, so that you can, uh... Oh, chicken coops. Chicken coops. So that you can grab them and, uh, drop them in the water for other ships to hit, like landmines. Yeah, I heard you. Don't pull up the next one, because I'm gonna, we can show them how to sell it. I'm gonna show them how to do the snakes. Uh, there are no snakes on this island. Not a whole lot. Oh, Is hey, that you? Skeleton, friend. Yeah. There's a shark in the water. Oh, lovely. Can't wait. Uh, where's the skeleton cubes at? I don't see them anywhere on the ship. Oh, we didn't take them from the island. We forgot. There are two sharks. Nice. Well, I'll go say so, hello. To battle hello sharks, if you're near an island, you can just hop on the island and shoot them and then get in the water so they come back. Um, otherwise, you'll want to have a blunderbuss and a sword. Because typically it'll only take a shot or two from a blunderbuss to kill a shark. Three shots for me. Okay. Because it's me. Do you get uh, rewards from killing just regular sharks, though? Uh, no, but I think as of the Hunter's Call edition, April 30th, you will be able to hunt sharks. Nice. Sounds like fun. I think. I'm not 100% sure on that, because I'm not in their uh, little test server. I'm taking the gunpowder barrel back to the boat. I'm taking the snake basket just in case we find one when we get on the island. The outpost. Because I'm assuming you're going to show how to sell the gunpowder barrel. Yeah. Which isn't advised. If you're going to play any longer, don't get rid of it. Unless you're looking for PvP, in which case, that's still kind of risky because it can self-destruct on you. Especially with the new update. So, what we're going to be doing since we have the gunpowder barrel is we're going to be putting it on the crow's nest. That way, if it does go off, it's not going to put holes in our hull. And as of April 30th update, the only thing it'll do is break our mast. Which is still a lot worse than what it is now, which is it does nothing. Well, they're going to be showing people how to stock up because planks are going to be way, way important now. Especially with PvP mode. Yeah. Well, the PvP, PvP mode, mode is going to be a separate instance, I think. Well, yeah. I just don't know what exact, how exactly they're going to do it. Because I heard it might be a battle royale, in which case looting is going to be important. But how to do it really quickly is going to be really important. So, like... Yeah, it is it is going to be a battle royale. I know that for sure. Because everyone's going to get... The same quest <clears throat> with like the same uh, loot markers and everything on the same islands. So there will be a bunch of people heading to like these islands to dig up treasure and whatnot, but there's going to be crews that are all competing for the same treasure. Oof, that's. It's going to be such a unique experience to be honest. But I mean, if you're just starting out. So, Finding those barrels on the water is going to be crucial. Yeah, so what's going to happen in the PvP update is if you've watched Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, Dead Man's Chest, you know, where uh, Jack and everyone's on that island and they're all fighting over the heart of Davy Jones box, and then, like, the, the Davy Jones crew shows up and Jack and... Uh, What's, uh, William? 
Yep. Tur Turner, Earl, and Peach. And then uh, someone else. Yeah, yeah. Barbosa? Orlando Bloom, whoever the heck, I don't know. But anyway, they, they're all fighting over the chest, and then the uh, crew of Davy Jones shows up. It's going to be like that, where there's going to be a bunch of different factions all going for the same chest, and you just got to fight for it. <laughs> I'm going to be so nervous in that, but that's going to be so much fun. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure like all the Pirate Legends are going to try it out just for at least leveling up purposes. Yeah, for sure. Which is going to be creepy. I don't want to go against Pirate Legends. But hopefully there'll be new players too, so we can... Well, it doesn't mean they're good, it just means they played the game for a long time. Well, I mean, but that's the thing. It's not like you're going, you're playing Fortnite against somebody who has no idea what building even is. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely they've been on the seas, they know how to survive, they know how to loot. They're probably going to have something. Yeah. I wonder if you just start out with the sword if you find weapons. I don't know. Because I... that part would be interesting, if you find weapons depending upon where you go. Now that, that would be an interesting one. Because if that's the case, I have reached is going to be so strong yeah. for a player like me. For a player like you, probably the blunderbuss will be your friend. <laughs> yeah, or the but, pistol. Honestly, pistol all around I'd prefer, but god, I love sniping. I always love sniping. Every game. If you want to see snipes on anything, let me know. <laughs> Uh, drop the anchor? No, I'm rolling the sail up. We might have to drop anchor depending on how fast we're going, but I think we'll be okay. Well, honestly, we don't have much to load or un unload anyway, so... Uh, you wanna grab the yeah, gunpowder, I'll grab the basket and just ground. So, the gunpowder kegs, they don't say specifically where they go, but they are a uh, merchant item, so you take it to the merchant people on the docks here. Now, our ship is still going away, so I'm going to drop anchor. Well, do we really need it at this point? No, but I don't want to have to... We can show them how to scuttle it, I guess. That's a, probably the final thing. Yeah. Alright. Oh, well, there's two final things, technically, but that the other one will be real quick. So, I know I didn't cover this in the beginning of the video, but when you get to the merchant person, you've got the uh, gunpowder keg. You can sell it to them. Ta-da! And it gives you like 166 gold. Anywhere between like 150 and 200, I think, is what it's supposed to be. Um, but, one of the final things I wanted to show you, which I didn't cover in the beginning of the video, is uh, stocking your ship. So when you start out on an island, you get your ship, when you load up the game, anytime you load up the game, look for barrels on the island. The barrels will have stuff like bananas, extra quests, and uh, cannonballs and planks. So you want to fill your inventory with those, take them back to your ship, and then just keep doing that for as long as you can till the island's empty. That way you don't have you don't run the risk of running out of supplies halfway through your voyage. So when you grab everything and go back to your ship here. You hop on your ship and the respective barrels for everything. I know I didn't show you guys this either. But cannonballs go in here. It's marked with the three cannonballs on the sloop. And there's usually some in the bottom, but what you want to do is you want to transfer all the cannonballs from the bottom to up top so you have easier access to them. So you don't have to like look down during a fight or try and guess where your cannonballs are because they're always going to be in the top if you do that. Um, your wood barrel is marked with the plank and hammer, and then you load up your wood in there. And your bananas and other food will be stored in these barrels with the fish and meat on them which will be added April 30th. Now, another thing that will be added April 30th update is see these gaps in the railing up front here? That's where we will be getting our harpoons. And that's on every ship. Now, to scuttle a ship, 
if you're leaving game or you don't have any loot and you don't want to be chased by the players anymore who are chasing you, what you'll want to do is go into your exit screen, you hit escape, and you go to my crew, and you go to scuttle ship, which is all the way down here at the bottom by crew management. And then you're going to want to vote yes. Now, if you're a true pirate, when you vote yes and your ship is sinking, you're going to go over here, hit add for more on your instruments, and you're going to play your ship off. You're going to play a shanty while your ship sinks into the depths below. Because while you are a pirate, you're still sad that your ship is sinking. We could also drink while it sinks. That's also acceptable. Yes. And even if you fall in the water, you just wait and play your instrument. <laughs> All the way until you drown, or you're a coward. Well, I am no coward, so I will drown with my ship. I'll drown before you, coward. <laughs> Lies, I have half health. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> Drown first, you won't. Hey, now he's singing. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> now, was. if you are a coward, uh, you can take your mermaid to your new ship. But if you aren't, just drown, and then you'll spawn at your new ship. And if you're more funny, you can make the mermaid listen to you. Which ah. might be worse than her experience. Is her. Oh no, you disappeared. No. I drowned. Coward. <laughs> oh wait. Whatever. Hello. Now I'm just, now I'm just whistling underwater. That makes sense. <laughs> yes, you don't need air to whistle. You can just whistle with water. It's fine. Wow. It must be who whip. Then, uh... Okay. Well, anything else you want to show on the video? Um, no, I think that's about it. So, we'll go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna do a wrap-up and then you can, uh, do a plug for your channel if you want. Oh, I can put it at the end. I can video edit this. Okay. Well, so that's all for today, guys. Uh, thank you for watching Hellcat Science. This has been a Sea of Thieves tutorial before the April 30th update for all the new players that will be joining. A uh, person who has helped me out a lot during this is Cross Current, right next to our gunpowder barrel here. And uh, we will <laughs> see you next time. Yep. <laughs>